the switch from temporary workers, sometimes that takes a while, you got to earn it, you know, whether, you know, whether you really want to hire someone permanently and give them benefits is a big decision. Now they're, they're not even waiting. They're, the temporary people, they're just saying, what, just come on board. Exactly. If a, if, a, if a company hires temporary people and they like them, they're converting them faster than we've ever seen, actually, at a rate 50 percent higher than pre-pandemic. 50 percent. I mean, come on. Yeah. My, my company works with venture-backed companies, private equity-backed companies, publicly traded companies, and we're seeing the demand for workers higher than I've been. I've been doing this for 25 years in the jobs business through three recessions. I've never seen anything like this, Joe. Accounting is our most in-demand business right now. That's because no one wants to be an accountant. I, I, I no, it, it's because everybody's everybody's got SPAC fever. So you get you get the companies that are pre-IPO, whether it. they're. But yeah, well, I think what I, I'm joking a little bit, but what I yeah, mean me is, co companies are preparing their back office in a way that we've never seen before, and they're having their accounting and their finance teams beefed up because they know that things are coming. I'm not sure I necessarily agree that companies are hiring in bulk to anticipate mass turnover. I mean, we saw that pre-pandemic, the engagement level of employees is 68%. Employees usually are not that engaged from a standpoint of, you don't grow up and say, oh, I wanna be an accountant, I wanna be an analyst, I wanna be in marketing, you wanna be a fireman or a ballerina. So what ends up happening is you get to work and reality sets in. The real challenge we face now the real challenge is how are we going to keep up with this billion dollar stimulus when people are going to get more jobs for throwing a hammer and we don't have those people? Well, uh, Kevin, I'll get back to you just one second. I just want Tom to comment on this. You think if the infrastructure bill does get passed, there's going to be another two years of this same environment we're in right now? I do. Um, I think I think that billion, you know, if a billion dollar package gets done, then it lowers the chance for huge inflation. We get three or four billion. I think it's a, it's a whole nother ball game. But we get this billion dollar inflation or uh, infrastructure package passed and we are going to see the blue collar jobs really ramp up. And I think as, as long as we, the, the, you know, the wild card here, Joe, is the Delta variant and uh, COVID-19 coming back. If that doesn't, if we stay where we're at now, we get that infrastructure passed, we're looking at another 24 to 36 months of this bull market. Wow. So, Catherine, with all this in mind, what are you expecting today, uh, and how will it compare to some of the previous months? Some have been disappointing, some have been better uh, when we release these numbers on the first Friday. Well, you know, I think, look, it's it's obviously always a little bit challenging to call things on a month by month basis, but I absolutely agree that this trend of, uh, of, of increased hiring of a bull market, it is it is here to stay for the foreseeable future. And we're seeing that um, many job seekers change their priorities during the pandemic. They had a lot of time, particularly for those in knowledge worker roles or digital roles. Many of them were working from home. They were rethinking what they want out of their career. And all of a sudden, now that they're surging back into the workforce or changing jobs, um, they're prioritizing different things. Our data shows that right now, um, remote work opportunities, access to great benefits like full health care, these are some things that are higher priorities of job seekers than ever before. And so it's, it's really changing the landscape of what a lot of employers are needing to do to get access to these great people. Um, and I think that competition, it's, it's good for labor, frankly, um, but I, I also think it's going to drive some of this increased frenzy uh, because they're, they're simply, um, the market's simply not changing fast enough to accommodate some of the demands from employees. And we, we've been through maybe a 10, 12, 15 year period where wages at the low end really didn't uh, keep up, uh, Catherine. So is that, we're seeing this change now and we saw it start to happen before the pandemic, it's gonna happen again. And what does that mean for whether inflation is transitory in your view, if, if we really do see permanently higher wages across the board? Look, you know, it's obviously a balance because many employers are doing whatever they can to lure people back to work without fundamentally changing wages. You see this in sign-on bonuses, in additional perks, um, in a wide variety of tactics, strategies, and offerings that companies are using to try and bring people back without fundamentally changing wages. At the same time, um, I do think we're seeing that that pressure up. And so, uh, you know, I, I, um, I would say our 
you know, our space and our demographic is uh, often focused on entry and mid-level full-time yeah. knowledge workers. So slightly different than the hourly set, but we are seeing wages increase as that competition just cannot be stated any way else. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.